Hi, my name is Carl, and I'm going to talk about the effect of small bacteria in your gut on your overall health. More specifically, about those fluff fluffy things. It's very important to say that I'm not a scientist. As like students from HHL, I visited business schools for my bachelor and master. However, I want to talk about this topic because it has fascinated me in so many ways that I even started a company in the field. The company is called Mybex. Some of you might have heard about it. I founded Mybex with a pharmaceutical scientist and a medical doctor who taught me a lot about bacteria and our individual organism during the past three years. So you can consider me as a pseudoscientist who knows some stuff about bacteria. So what has brought me here? Why is this topic so important to me? It was May 2016. On the outside, my life was pretty amazing. I worked as an analyst in investment banking. During my studies, I was always very keen on working in the financial sector. So basically, I had achieved what I had wished for. I was earning good money in my dream job, had a supportive family and a healthy relationship. The only problem was, I was feeling horrible. So by any measures, everything was great, but how could my mental health be so disastrous? Well, you start searching for reasons, and the most obvious one was my job. Even though it was my dream job, I was working very long hours, and my time had the greatest exposure towards the job. So what did I do? I quit my job. I then went on traveling with my nowadays co-founder Sebastian for a couple of months. So now everything should be fine, right? I had enough money in the bank, was traveling through Latin America, and had no job that burdened me. But guess what? I was still feeling shit. I told Sebastian about my issue. During his pharma studies, he conducted lots of research around the human microbiome and what effects your gut health can have on your overall well-being. He approached me and said, hey, Carl, you should stop searching for those outside reasons because the real reason is probably inside you. He specifically told me about the gut-brain axis and that a disbalance of bacteria in your gut can lead to mental health problems. In the beginning, I thought, okay, this cannot be true and the whole gut-feeling thing is just some kind of mystery. However, it turned out that Sebastian was absolutely right. And this piece of advice changed my life forever on so many levels. Within the next minutes or so, I would like to explain to you why this is the case and how a disbalance of bacteria in your microbiome can lead to problems in your brain or other organs. First of all, we should start with what your microbiome actually is. To describe this, I found a very nice analogy from the Harvard School of Public Health. Picture a bustling city on a weekday morning with people rushing to get to work or to appointments. Now imagine this at a microscopic level and you get an idea of how our microbiome looks like inside our bodies, consisting of trillions of microorganisms of thousands of different species. These not only include bacteria, but fungi, parasites, and viruses. Now in a healthy person, those bugs coexist peacefully with the largest number found in your gut, but also throughout other parts of your body. Each person in this room has an entirely unique microbiome, which is originally determined by one's DNA. A person is first exposed to those microorganisms during delivery in the birth canal and through their mother's breast milk. And during the process of becoming an adult, outside factors such as your diet can change your microbiome to be either beneficial or to put you at greater risk for disease. And now I want you to think about three key factors. As already mentioned, the largest number of microorganisms inhabit your gut. Secondly, your gut is the largest contact surface area towards the outside of your body. And thirdly, your gut constantly communicates with other organs such as your brain. Maybe now you get a grasp where it could be beneficial to have a balanced microbiome. As I've already explained the first factor, I would like to focus on the second factor, how your gut is the largest contact surface area to the outside world. And here you can see a picture of a typical gut. If you would unfold it, it has a total surface area of 32 uh, square, square meters. This approximately corresponds to the size of my apartment when I was a student. 70% of your immune cells can be found here, and 80% of immune defense reactions happen here. This shows that your gut is not only the largest contact surface area towards the outside of your body, but it also yields the largest area for potential harm. But guess, guess what its best line of defense is? a balanced microbiome. So what factors can bring your microbiome into disbalance? Well, there's nutrition, there's sleep, and there's stress, but more to that later. Now that we have explained the second factor, I would like to elaborate on the third factor, how your gut actually communicates with other organs such as your brain. And I've briefly mentioned the concept behind it earlier. It's called the gut-brain axis, or informally known as your gut feeling. Basically, your gut and your brain communicate via two different ways. 
First of all, via your neural network, which basically means via your nerves. And second of all, they communicate via metabolites that are released into the blood and then transmit information and signals. And now it's getting interesting. The bacteria in your microbiome produce more than 20 different hormones and messenger substances. And today, I want you to think about one key hormone. Maybe you've heard about it. It's called serotonin. Serotonin is the key hormone that stabilizes our mood, feelings of well-being, and happiness. Now, in a healthy person, those messenger substances are transported in a balanced way, leading to a well-functioning brain, making you a happy person. And it's very important to say that your gut does not only communicate with your brain, but basically with every other organ in your body, such as your kidneys or your liver. And this communication works vice versa, implying that problems in one of your organs can lead to problems in your gut, such as diarrhea or constipation. So what does that mean? Listen to your gut. The last thing I would like to examine today is what factors actually lead to a balanced microbiome and thereby a healthy gut. First of all, there is fermented food, like fermented kimchi or very famous in Germany, sauerkraut. Then you get basically every type of vegetable that is good for your gut. Then there are probiotics, which are living bacteria cultures that settle in your gut. You should always get uh, at least eight hours of sleep because this also helps your gut health. Then there's exercise. And the last thing I would like to touch on today is what factors are actually bad for your gut and thereby lead to problems such as mental health problems or problems in one of your organs. You should avoid sugar and sweetness. You should avoid to take antibiotics unnecessarily because they kill all the healthy bacteria in your gut. You should avoid to smoke and to drink. And most importantly, you should avoid highly processed food. It is very important to say that a healthy gut is most often the combination of those factors. But by improving in some of those areas, I can assure you that you will feel a direct difference. When I had my issues back in 2016, especially my type of nutrition and the regularity of exercise were key drivers. Since I've improved in those areas, I feel better than never before. So I'd like, I would like to end my talk with the following words, even though I said them many times today, listen to your gut.